Hello everyone. So I came into an opportunity to pick up another uh, rare Polish rifle. This is a uh, FB Raid Unproduced uh, 1937 WZ-98A long rifle. And given how rare these are, I figured I'd make a little video kind of uh, talking about these as far as their history and uh, background is concerned. Now, as hard as it is to find uh, good information uh, in the English language on Polish Mausers, like some of the other ones that I've covered in my previous videos, there seems to be even less information out there about these uh, long rifles. Uh, so uh, the information that I'm presenting uh, in this video is what is uh, known uh, up to date and is subject to change in the future. Now, before I get into the discussion of the WZ-98A, I do need to talk about its predecessor, the WZ-98. Now, for some uh, background on the use of uh, long rifles uh, in the Polish military, uh, in 1921, the post-World War I Disarmament Committee uh, ordered the transfer of components, machinery, and arms material from the former Imperial German uh, Danzig Royal Arsenal to Poland, which helped facilitate the decision of the newly reborn country to adopt the Mauser 98 system for their military small arms. From 1922 to 1924, the State Rifle Factory in Warsaw, uh, Pańcowa Fabryka Karabinu Warszawa produced around 22,000 long rifles designated the WZ-98, which were virtually indistinguishable from those of the late war Gewehr 98s produced by the Imperial Germans during World War I. Now, since only 22,000 of those were produced, uh, they're extremely rare and very desirable and valuable. Um, and obviously I don't have one in my collection, but what I do have here is a Polish rework of a uh, former Imperial German Gewehr 98 that I can present here as a stand-in. These WZ-98 long rifles are marked on the receiver over here up top with PFK Warszawa, an early version of the Polish Eagle, and the year of manufacture at the bottom. For the rear sights, right over here, they have the World War I era Lange, Lange Vizier rear sight of the uh, Imperial German World War I rifles. And unlike the German rifles, the receivers are blued instead of being left in the white. The WZ-98s are bedded in single piece beechwood stocks the stocks feature finger grooves over here, a takedown disc for disassembly of the bolt and the buttstock, and they have a PFK Varshava marking on the right side of the butt over here, and another PFK Varshava marking at the semi pistol grip area right here. Now, you do need to understand that uh, as a newly reformed uh, country, Poland was pretty much handicapped from the beginning. The country was devastated from the effects of World War I, uh, didn't have a uh, well-established arms production industry. Um, it didn't have a rich firearms development history like its neighbors. And although it did receive um, the arms material and machinery from the Danzig Royal Arsenal, Poland didn't have uh, along with that, the full uh, technical data package for producing the Gewehr 98s. So as a result, uh, several references that I came across claim that uh, in comparison to the strict acceptance standards of the Imperial German facilities, the Polish-made WZ-98 long rifles were not of the same uh, level of quality uh, fit and finish. So regardless, in a short period of time, uh, there was a desire to equip the troops with a handier uh, short rifle or carbine, which is another reason why these were only produced for two years. So in 1925, the Polish military adopted a sort of modified clone of the Imperial German uh, Car 98A uh, carbines. Uh, this is designated the Karabinek of Zur 1898 or in the US, they're simply called the Polish K-98, which was produced from 1925 to 1931. 
followed by the WZ-29 short rifle, designated the K-29 or WZ-29, depending on the year of manufacture, uh, which were produced from 1930 up until 1939. Now, you might be wondering, with such a utilitarian short rifle like the WZ-29, why was there a desire to kind of have a concept of a long rifle reemerge in the 1930s? Um, from what I gather, almost no other European nation uh, made the sort of shift in this era in terms of rifle length. So we'll dig into that a little bit more. So from what I understand from reading several references in uh, Polish, the adoption of carbines and short rifles uh, in the you know, 1920s into the early 1930s uh, is the primary armament of the uh, Polish infantry. That came out of uh, uh, the tactics and uh, uh, experiences of uh, uh, infantry fighting in the 1920s where there was a lot of emphasis on mobility and maneuvering, which was kind of paramount to both attack and defense. Now, those tactics involved uh, firing at uh, enemy targets uh, at a distances of up to, I think it was like 400 meters, which was pretty well suited for uh, short rifles and carbines. Now, in the 1930s, uh, the concept of combined arms uh, warfare was being explored by Poland. That is, you know, the combination of uh, infantry attacks uh, along with, you know, taking into account the advancements of uh, fighter aircraft, bombers, um, artillery, tanks, and other military technology that was uh, coming around at that point in history. This required changes in infantry tactics accordingly. So based on some theoretical assumptions, the Pol Polish military strategists of the time uh, expected that the range that uh, the infantry was going to be engaging targets would be significantly extended compared to uh, what was theoretically being used uh, with the uh, carbines and the short rifles uh, that were previously used. So uh, therefore changes in military doctrine uh, adopted in 1934 consisted primarily of having uh, Polish infantry utilizing uh, deep groupings of uh, troops, uh, engaging targets at uh, distances of up to 500 meters in attack and defense, and snipers with uh, scoped rifles would be theoretically engaging targets of uh, up to 1,000 meters. And it was deemed that the short rifles and carbines uh, being used at the time uh, couldn't meet these requirements due to their uh, inferior ballistic performance in comparison to something like a long rifle like the WZ-98A. Um, so this desire for long rifles reemerged. Now that is not to say that the carbines and short rifles were immediately uh, outclassed and put into storage. Uh, those were expected to remain uh, equipped to tr support troops like uh, artillery, cavalry, and machine gun units, for example. Now, Polish military historians and hobbyists to this day are still kind of perplexed why this doctrine shift was pursued, but as they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. So yes, the WZ-98A long rifle was... Uh, adopted in 1934 uh, in response to the doctrine shift of that time, but production of these actually didn't start until 1936 due to uh, some time needed by F.B. Radom to prepare for the production of uh, these much longer wood stocks. So uh, older WZ-98 long rifles with the Langevier sight from the 1920s were brought in to, uh, back into service for the time being to kind of satisfy that need for long rifles. Um, as an aside, uh, I believe that's also why there's a, a lot of these former Imperial German Gewehr 98 uh, reworks that have uh, FB Radom logo uh, on the crest over here. As uh, those reworks were kind of quickly put together around that time period to meet demand uh, while domestic production of the WZ-98As was starting to ramp up.
The WZ-98A long rifles were produced exclusively at FB Radom um, from 1936 to 1939. An older reference I came across from, uh, I think it was 1984, was the total production numbers of uh, these rifles at uh, 44,500. However, more recent kind of independent studies on internet forums uh, kind of put this figure closer to around 77,000. But regardless, that's still, you know, an insignificant number of uh, rifles in comparison to, you know, those being produced by Poland's neighbors. So with the uh, background and historical aspect kind of covered, let's take a closer look at uh, this example and just kind of talk about some details uh, of the WZ-98A long rifle. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is a 1937 dated example. It is a mismatched rifle, but to be honest, at this level of rarity, it doesn't really matter to me. And uh, what I will do is I'll supplement uh, with photos of better quality examples to kind of help illustrate some concepts that I can't really cover with this particular example. All right, so starting at the receiver over here, the crest is marked with FB Radom, the Polish Eagle, and the date of production, in this case, 1937. Now to differentiate these rifles from the uh, previous long rifles that were made uh, in the early 1920s, they're designated as WZ-98A, on the side rail. Also like all other domestically produced Polish Mausers, on the right side of the receiver there is a small Polish Eagle proof mark on the right side. For serial numbers, uh, those are given in numbers only with no letter suffix, like previously done on the WZ-29 short rifles, with uh, any leading zeros provided as uh, applicable. And they're found on the left side of the receiver, as well as the barrel. Barrel is stamped with the serial number to match the receiver, small Polish Eagle proof marks uh, at the top and on the right hand side. The design of the rear sights is similar to that of the Gewehr 98M or uh, K98K. The rear sight is zeroed at 300 meters the rear sight bait is, is stamped 98A and has the last four digits of the serial number. The rear sight spring has this uh, rectangular uh, indentation in it. And the rear sight ladder is uh, stamped with the last uh, four digits of the serial number as well. The front sight of this rifle is original, but curiously, as you'll note, it has these grooves in it, and it looks like it was reworked at some point by the Germans uh, to accommodate a sight HUD like later pattern K98Ks. On this particular example, uh, the bolt body is that of a WZ-29 short rifle. Given that the serial number has the P letter suffix and the rest of the bolt parts on it, um, I believe are from a Gewehr 98 as they have imperial proofs on them and they have the last two digits of a serial number. Now for a correct Polish bolt, uh, it would just be five digits over on the uh, bolt handle uh, with no letter and leading zeros as required. And the small parts like the, uh, the shroud, the cocking piece and the safety flag would not be numbered. The bolt stop spring is riveted like that of a WZ-29 short rifle, and it is not serialized. The stock for this particular rifle is indeed Polish marked for a WZ-98 long rifle, but it doesn't match the receiver. But I'm okay with that, to be honest. The stocks are typically found in beechwood two-piece construction dovetailed together with the takedown disc for the bolt disassembly. However, I don't think that's universally true. As I have a example of a Gewehr 98 uh, rework that's in the WZ-98A stock that is of single piece construction. As you can see, there is no uh, joint of uh, two pieces dovetailed together. One notable difference 
of the WZ98A stock over the previous WZ98 stock is the presence of a hardwood reinforcing dowel to provide strength. This dowel is found as a dark circle just around the uh, trigger guard area behind the magazine box. It's a bit difficult to see on this example, but the WZ98A stocks have a serial number applied lengthwise along the spine under a large H. I have not seen any reference that clarifies the significance of this letter H, as both uh, original Polish examples and German reworks have this marking, so it doesn't correspond to a hair marking like it does on K98K stocks. It is a bit faded on this example, but at the semi-pistol grip area of the stock, uh, these are marked with a small Polish eagle and the letter D over the number 2 in an oval, which I believe is the inspection proof mark of Major Tadeusz Dzerzhinski at FB Radom. The front and the rear barrel bands over here on this rifle are from a Gewehr 98. Uh, the front barrel band has the uh, parade loop for the uh, Gewehr 98 style spring, or sling, I should say. And for the rear barrel band, uh, this one is actually incorrect. Um, the rear barrel band is of a unique Polish design um, that has a uh, somewhat of a flat profile and doesn't have the indented ring around it like this one currently does. On this particular example, the trigger guard, floor plate, and action screws are that of a uh, K98K, which is incorrect. Um, on a uh, typical Gewehr, or I'm sorry, typical WZ98A, uh, this would be of the Gewehr 98 design, uh, which has a hole over here for the quick detach sling, and all the screws. Um, the trigger guard and the floor plate would have been unnumbered. I do want to briefly uh, touch on some accessories for these rifles, though further research might be required. For slings, these were fitted with standard Gewehr 98 type slings with a parade loop and a quick detach buckle. I'm not sure if the Poles had unique slings uh, that they developed uh, domestically with their own markings, but I would assume that they look identical to those uh, used by the Germans in World War I. For cleaning rods, I believe that the Poles used uniquely shaped cleaning rods that are reminiscent of those that were used in the WZ-29 short rifles where the entire length of the rod section up to the tip is uniform of a thicker diameter without a sort of tapered out section at the cleaning rod tip. Though, like this one, uh, they're usually found with Gewehr 98 uh, cleaning rods, especially if they are reworked. For muzzle protectors, these are found with World War I era Gewehr 98 style muzzle caps. I have uh, actual Polish example here designed for a WZ-98A uh, made by, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Krank and Lempitski, or Wempitski, I should say. Um, unfortunately, this was found in relic condition and it was only after uh, soaking for about a week in croil that I was able to get it opened up, but the internals are completely shot. So this is just a display piece for now. And I could be wrong, but I know uh, FB Radom and Perkun made uh, muzzle covers for the WZ-29 uh, short rifles and the K-98 carbines. So I'm um, pretty sure they also made uh, these Gewehr 98 style muzzle caps for the uh, WZ-98As as well. As far as bayonets go, these would be best fitted with a WZ-28 or WZ-29 mobilization type bayonet, which would have a muzzle ring. These bayonets are made by either Perkun, and here's a close-up of the Perkun version, or by FB Radon, and a close-up of the FB Radon.
Now, it's assumed that the survivability of these rifles uh, after the September 1939 campaign was rather low. So unless you are extremely lucky, uh, you're going to have to find these uh, in a reworked configuration um, by the Germans. And to be honest, I'm not 100% sure if any of these actually made their way over to Spain for the Spanish Civil War. But I'm pretty sure all the reworks were uh, done by Germans or uh, well after World War II by uh, some of the countries where these things ended up, like somewhere in the Balkans. German capture reworks of these long rifles, which I believe are designated the uh, Gewehr 299P, P for Polish, are defined by the following characteristics. On the barrel bands, you'll find that they are serialized. On the front barrel band, it'll have the full serial number. And on the rear barrel band, it'll be the last two digits of the serial number. And on certain examples, I have seen that the uh, rear barrel band is replaced with that of a uh, Gewehr 98M. With the trigger guards and floor plates, uh, the Germans would uh, serialize the trigger guard with the full serial number, and the floor plate will be serialized with the last two digits of the serial number. For the bolts of the rifle, the Germans will glue the entire bolt assembly and all of the small parts will be serialized with the last two digits of the serial number. And lastly, on the German rework stocks, you, sometimes you'll find that there is a German depot marking over here on the uh, bottom of the butt stock. So I do have a question that I want to reach out to the collecting community about, and that's uh, in regards to period photos. So despite how few of the uh, WZ-98 long rifles, that is the ones produced by PFK Varshava in uh, the 1920s, um, whenever I take a look at uh, period photos of Polish soldiers in the 1930s, anytime there's a photo of a soldier with a long rifle, it's almost always one of these uh, WZ-98s with the roller coaster uh, rear sight. Uh, never one of these WZ-98As with the flat tangent sight over here. This seemed to be a little bit odd for me because uh, even by the end of 1936, there were almost as many WZ-98As being produced by FB Radom uh, than there were WZ-98s um, producing their entire production run. So one theory that I have is uh, maybe, you know, in the late 1930s, when these uh, uh, 98A long rifles were being produced, you know, there was the uh, larger European war looming on the horizon. So maybe there wasn't uh, a whole lot of effort uh, given into making kind of promotional, uh, patriotic photos of soldiers uh, in drill with these new rifles, or maybe those photos just didn't survive the ravages of World War II. So um, if anyone watching this video uh, knows more or has, you know, maybe examples of period photos where these rifles are being shown, uh, please let me know in the comments. So acquiring uh, this relatively rare uh, Polish rifle has been a bit of a bucket list uh, item checked off for me, and I'm um, pretty glad to share this with you guys along with any information I came across uh, for, uh, I guess, the history and development of this rifle. So thanks again for watching.